Oh, kumpul di sana. Ayah, itu apa? Nen, nendo anda biayi. Ah. Are we set? Sean, are you set? You know, you are the only guy editors don't matter. All these guys are good, but their editors are on the payroll of DPP. So we don't, we don't blame you. We blame your bosses. Understand those, those dynamics. Uh, today, we got instructions from two of our clients, one, the late Silas Ita's family, who have instructed us and we have filed a petition for the removal of the DPP. The family of Silas Ita over the fraudulent transfer of the shares, we have filed that petition. <clears throat> Secondly, we have filed a second petition, a petition by one by Mr. Waiganjo, Joshua, the one who was alleged to have been a police reservist imposter. We have dealt with that, and because of Cliff heading somewhere, I'll allow him to present, then I'll conclude what the issues are. Mr. Cliff. Yes. In the case of uh it's a matter whereby an advisor had been given to the DPP indicating to him that the evidence that was in that matter was not sufficient by itself to, to get a conviction. It was not sufficient to be taken to court. It was not sufficient to be addressed in any other way. But the DPP, regardless of these advisories, regardless of all the advice that he had been given by the other stakeholders, decided that this matter needs to be taken to court. This matter reached court, the evidence fell short of the required standard, and uh, Mr. Waiganja has been acquitted. Why shouldn't Mr. Waiganja complain in that when a person has been given a position of authority, comes in, uh, does not take due regard of anything that he has been advised, thinks that he's the cowboy, and goes on and prosecutes a person so innocent. Mr. Waiganja feels aggrieved. Compensation cannot be enough because people say that, of course, you'll be paid, you'll be compensated, you'll be given money in form of damages. What about your mental uh, state? What about your, 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 your appearance in public? What about who you are in, in, in this uh, society? I tend to think that once we say a person is rogue and we have brought so many cases and we have brought so many situations, can he still stay in that office and fight and say that he still wants to stay in office regardless of the overwhelming cases, the overwhelming evidence that is there? He goes out there and starts saying that, that, is, uh, that uh, getting him out of office is not the only solution. But don't you think that that is the best solution? He needs to move out of that office. This is what we are saying. And people are complaining. And these are this not this the, the only petitions that are going to come. Believe me, we are lining them up and there are many. And we are started working on them slowly by slowly. Ultimately, this guy needs to save face. He needs to just walk out. He needs just to go home. Let him try some politics, maybe. It might help him. Thank you. Martina. The two petitions that we have filed today before the Public Service Commission, on behalf of the family of uh, Silas Ita um, and Mr. Joshua Waiganjo, raises issues of public interest and public concern. Uh, with the issue, in the petition for Silas Ita's family, the DPP has refused and failed to charge the now Justice Ole Sankali for the crimes he did while he was an advocate in the year 1999, number one, for intermeddling with the property of the deceased, and number two, for fraudulently transferring shares to himself, and thereafter to the main suspect, Sarah Wairimo Kamodo, in the murder of Tob Cohen. The petition for Joshua <coughs> Waiganjo is a, is, raises issues of whether the Director of Public Prosecutions is competent because he is acting outside 
the powers that he has been granted by the Constitution. In that petition, we articulate how the DPP insists that he has investigation. Nowhere in the correspondences between the DPP and the DCI does he direct the IG of police as per Article 157.4 of the Constitution to conduct further investigation. Instead, he insists, notwithstanding the court acquitting the accused person, he insists that he has investigation. The mandate of the Director of Public Prosecution is merely prosecution and not investigation. Therefore, he should stick to his mandate, and if <clears throat> that cannot be achieved, then he should vacate the office of the Director of Public Prosecution so that the office is not, is, not, uh, is not a place where anyone can abuse their power or abuse the office just because they have the independence that they, they've been conferred to by the Constitution. Therefore, this is a public interest appeal to the Director of Public Prosecution to decide to just vacate and suspend and that the Public Service Commission to forward the petition to the President for his suspension. Because at this point in time, we have, we have very many petitions and petitioners coming in with, with aggrievances caused by the Director of Public Prosecution. And in all these cases, all the, all the grounds that warrant the removal of the, de of the Director of Public Prosecution is very clear. Issues of gross misconduct, issues of abuse of office, issues of corrupt, pra corrupt practices. Therefore, we are appealing that the Public Service Commission discharge its mandate as per the Constitution and the relevant laws to ensure that the Director of Public Prosecution faces the charges in which he is being accused of. Today been filed at the Public Service Commission, one by Joshua Waiganjo, a man that is famously known as the fake cop, and the second one, the family of the late uh, Silas Ita, is another demonstration of the incompetence that has arrested the office of the Director of Public Prosecution, which is presided by Mr. Nudin Haji. Now, picking from Mr. Nudin Haji's recent interview on everybody should be sticking to their roles, it is quite evident if you take a keen perusal on the, the petition that has been filed by Mr. Joshua Waiganjo, where despite fair judgment or good judgment from the Director of Criminal Investigations, advising the DPP to resist the temptation of abusing the criminal justice process by preferring charges against Mr. Waiganjo for lack of uh, enough evidence for that matter, he goes ahead and presses charges against Mr. Waiganjo. Then on the eighth day of May 2020, through the wisdom, Solomonic as it is, of Mr. Honorable Ominde, Mr. Waiganjo is found not guilty of the 10 charges that he was accused of. Now, while it, while, while it is common practice that when someone has been maliciously prosecuted, that they should sue the, the office of the Attorney General to seek for compensation, I think time is ripe. Time is ripe that individuals who abuse their office who conduct their offices in a manner that does not attract public confidence, who drag people's names through court sessions and court proceedings and newspapers, they taint their reputation. These individuals, it is time that these individuals are also brought to book. They also answer to their negligence, their, their actions that, that uh, amount to an abuse of their, of their office. Uh, secondly, if you also to look at the petition that has been filed by the fa family of Silas Ita. Now, facts are stubborn. On the 9th, on the 19th, on, actually on the 20th day of April 1999, the family of Silas Ita loses their breadwinner, Mr. Silas Ita. Nine days later, this is on the 29th day of April 1999, shares, the one share belonging to Silas Ita in the Tobbs Limited Company is fraudulently transferred by Honorable Justice Sankale Olekantai to himself. This is against the understanding that since a person is deceased and their share should be subjected either to a process called nomination or to, through a process called succession so that it can go to its beneficiary or its dependent. Mr. Honorable uh, 
Sankale Ole Kantai transfers this share to himself, fraudulently as it is, and therefore committing the, com the, the offense of fraud, altering, and intermeddling with the estate of the late Silas Ita. Then secondly, you see a subsequent transfer, and these records are there at the, the, the registry of companies. Subsequently, Justice Sankale transfers this share from himself to Sara Wairimo Kamodo. This is two years later after this share has been transferred. Then it is so perplexing that against this evidence, against the documentations that are there at the registrar of companies, that the director of public prosecutions has omitted by wringing his hands and refusing to take any criminal action against Justice Sankale for the fraudulent transfer of this share and the intermeddling of the estate of the late Silas Ita. And secondly, he has refused to also prosecute Sara Wairimo Kamodo for the, for the fraudulent transfer of the share belonging to si Silas Ita and the intermeddling of the estate of Silas Ita. So against this evidence, this is, this is what has now been presented before the Public Service Commission to sit down, analyze the evidence and the facts that have been presented before them and establish whether, as of fact, the Director of Public Prosecution has failed in his mandate to discharge his powers and to exercise his authority as is demanded by the Constitution. Then lastly, the question that we ask ourselves, that in view of all this evidence that is being presented before the Public Service Commission, has Mr. Haji Nudin lived as per the letter and the spirit of Chapter 6 of our Constitution that calls for leadership that is of service, a leadership that is of integrity? Has he discharged his mandate in view of the evidence that is there in a manner that brings confidence to his office? And the resounding answer is a big no. Mr. Nudin Haji has failed this country. He has failed himself. He has failed these victims of these uh, criminal offenses. He has failed Mr. Waiganjo by prosecuting him for years on end on advice or against the advice from the Director of Criminal Investigations that there was no evidence to find him guilty. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> We have filed in total five petitions. The first petition was filed by the family, the late Top Coin. The second petition was filed by our client, Njeru, Mr. Francis Njeru. The two petitions, Mr. Nurdin Haji got a gag order and stopped any discussion about the two petitions. A third petition by Sean for Jack and Jill. After we file and address the country, mysteriously, our client withdrew out of either threats, intimidation, bribery, corruption, or whatever reasons, that petition was withdrawn. Clearly, we shall be pursuing how our client withdrew that petition because if there will be any indication of interference with the administration of justice, then we'll push to have Mr. Nurdin Haji held liable for that. Third, today we have two more petitions, one by Silas Ita's family and the other one by Waiganjo. Will they face the same fate of gag orders? We are yet to see, because that is a trend, the Director of Public Prosecution, one Mr. Nurudin Haji, he's, he's paranoid of these matters being discussed in public. Number two, the Director of Public Prosecution, in an address in Mombasa, in the NCAJ, he put it very clearly that everybody does do their job. We also have clips when the director of public prosecution addressed a press, a, a media interview at Spice FM. 
he really argued his case and came out with two issues that the petitions have been funded by other state organs, by other state people. I want to be very clear here. No instruction has come from one George Kinoti. No instruction for these lawyers has come from any other constitutional office. All that we are filing are matters filed by known people, human beings, Kenyans who have faced the rogue DPP actions in court. Third, his bloggers, the DPP's bloggers, have put it on Twitter that cabinet secretaries, cabinet ministers have raised billions to fund this activity. Let me put it very clearly and respond to my senior and all the others that we have not received a penny from those cabinet ministers purportedly funding the removal of the DPP. The basis of filing for removal of the DPP is not money collected, is not religion, as it is being said that one Rudin Haji is being target, targeted by virtue that is a Muslim, by virtue that he comes from a minority. The third petition, Jack and Jill, is a Muslim. So let nobody bring the question of religion into this matter or into the question of party politics. On Twitter, there is argument that the Jubilee Party now wants one Rudini out of office. We have no instructions from Jubilee Party. We have no instructions from any cabinet minister. We have no instructions from any government agency. We have instructions from five petitioners, known their address, who have appended the signatures into this. And the only thread that is moving on is the incompetence of the DPP. Where have we seen Mr. Nurdin Haji arguing a case in court? Nowhere. He's busy addressing media interviews. Prosecutor's job is litigation in court. He has never appeared, even in a matter of assault, to litigate. What type of prosecutor is he telling Kenyans? He is. What level of confidence and competence does he exhibit? If he has never argued in any matter in court. So the questions we are raising and we are seeking for, let him lead his prosecutors in court. Remember, he has raised the question of his competencies as a fighter of Al-Shabaab in Somalia. He has raised in issues in Spice FM that is very good at arguments on TV and on radio. Can we see the competence? And that is among the reasons we asked for the qualifications of one Rudin Haji. Does he deserve to be in office based on failure to do that mandate? A prosecutor's life is a litigator. He's not a desktop guy. He's not a desktop guy. So we are raised these issues and we have confirmed to everybody that we have not been funded by any cabinet ministers or any political or party or any wing of politics. We have raised these grounds purely based on the petitioners that we have and the petitions are known and therefore and, 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 and you can understand our position among the clients that has instructed us is Waiganjo. He said, I can remove the mask. Let nobody say that Mr. Waiganjo has been funded by ministers. Mr. Waiganjo has been funded by Jubilee Party. Mr. Waiganjo has been funded by the DCI or by any other government officer. He has paid our fees to go to court. He has been mistreated. He has faced a lot of injustices, 
in the hands of the director of public prosecution, one Nuruddin Haji. Let him not hide on those issues that we have raised. Our clans are no more. As I said, this is the fifth petition. We will continue processing the petitions that are there because there are very many, as, as I indicated, they might be going to 100 because Kenyans are not satisfied with the manner in which he is handling his position. Let me put it clearly to Mr. Nurdin Haji. We are not challenging the decision of the discretion he has to charge or he has not to charge. We are challenging the actions of Nurdin Haji pursuant to Article 157, Clause 1. 11, that he must exercise his power judiciously, in the public interest, and without malice or without undue, without the discrimination. Mr. Waiganjo is one of the people who have faced a total abuse under Article 158, the procedure for removal of the DPP is settled in Article 158, his argument on Spice TV and radio that anybody aggrieved should go to court. The wisdom of Wanjiko in 2010 in that constitution provided for Article 158 as a legal constitutional remedy to remove a rogue DPP. So he cannot start telling us that we go to court Mr. Waganjo goes to court, or anybody goes to JR to challenge that decision, or anybody goes to the Constitutional Court. Article 156, 58 binds every Kenyan. It is a position that that is the way to remove a rogue DPP. And we shall proceed continuously to push for the removal of the DPP. Mr. Waganjo, can. I have filed a move from Mr. Nordin Haji for what he has been doing to me. In fact, he has said I live in court forever. But because the constitution is here for us, that's why I have instructed my lawyers to remove this man for the sake of the other people who cannot come and file a petition. In fact, I had a case for the last 10 years. He had, uh, he had done an appeal. In Akuru, we had been charged three people. He took the two. I, uh, he appealed for me alone. Now I'm wondering, how can you file an appeal in a charge sheet which were charged in the same fact, appealing for one person and leaving the other two? So he has, he is abusing his powers, and uh, that's why I have instructed Mr. Omari. We filed the petition for his removal. Let me just rest. Yeah. He has not been told by anybody to instruct us. He's paying, he has sold it to pay us and some goats to pay us fees to go to court. So that narrative that anybody is funding petitioners to move to court should not hold. Any more clarification?